so today I would like to talk a little bit about sleep. Um, I think it is one of the most important things um, for our health and for our immune system um, that we neglect the most or um, don't really think about. Um, there is quite a lot of research that link lack of sleep to um, cardiovascular problems, high blood pressure, diabetes, depression, um, anxiety disorders. Um, and, and it's interesting, even if you take antidepressants, um, but you don't correct your sleep, um, then they're not going to work that properly. Um, because there's such a strong link between depression and, for instance, insomnia. Um, I, I want to start off by comparing your brain to a computer. So if you are um, a techie, a computer buff, uh, they will tell you that one of the problems with laptops is the fact that they overheat. Um, so if you want them to um, have a longer life, then um, cooling is, is important and that's one of the reasons except for the fact that for your neck it's far better that a laptop should never be on your lap or just on the table but on a stand and, and it also helps with the cooling effect. Um, so your brain is like your computer um, except it's a far better one um, and even neuroscientists will tell you that we don't know um, even a quarter of um, the brain's ability, but um, we do know that sleep is important. And um, think about your computer. If it's um, it's not working properly, it's slow, um, and you find the techie, they will ask you, have you switched it on and have you switched it off? Um, the thing is that our brain needs the same thing. Um, when we sleep, it basically switches off, but also it cools down. So it's one of the reasons why when it's really hot, we don't sleep well, because the brain cannot really cool down. And that is one of the things that happen when we sleep. Another thing that happens is that um, the brain, when we sleep, it test its connections, it rectifies it, um, but also it's um, everything that has happened during the day, it makes sense of that. Um, and it's also the time when um, everything that you've learned is then written into the long-term memory. So planning before an exam is not a good idea because you're not going to remember it. If you haven't slept, then um, there's no way that the brain can take all of that knowledge and put that into the long-term memory. Um, the other thing is that it is the only time that the brain can help the body to heal. So that is the time when healing takes place. Now it's interesting that, for instance, when you have a brain injury or if you had a brain operation, that's one of the things that you want to do, is you want to sleep a lot, because that's when the brain can try and heal itself. But the same goes for any other operation. If you had a back operation or a neck operation, most patients will tell you that they really want to sleep all the time, um, and they sleep quite a lot, because that is the time that the brain is going to heal itself. Um, now, we've been in lockdown now for five weeks, um, and I am quite sure that of most of us have got very interesting sleeping patterns at the moment, because we don't have to get up at five to be at work at eight, um, and in the afternoon we can take a nap, so then we don't want to go to bed at nine in the evening or ten, um, and that in the long term is problematic because sleep for the brain is quite complex. There are quite a lot of things that need to happen, certain um, 
receptors need to be switched on and certain um, neurotransmitters um, have to um, switch off this area to switch on this area. So very complex. Um, but it mainly relies on two rhythms, your circadian rhythm and your homeostatic sleep-wake rhythm. Now, your circadian rhythm is what keeps you awake, and it depends on daylight. Um, so sharp light um, makes the, wakes the brain up because it's daytime and you need to get up. Um, secondly, your um, homeostatic sleep-wake rhythm has, is the time if you've been awake for a certain time, that is the rhythm that comes up and say, listen, um, I think we need to sleep now. Okay. So you can imagine that going to sleep in the middle of the day, now you've had some sleep, now your circadian rhythm goes up, and by tonight it hasn't come down properly for the homeostatic rhythm um, to make you go back to sleep. Um, the other problem is um, our technology, um, and it is the blue light of television, iPad, iPhone, or cell phones, and computers. So we watch Netflix until late at night, and then we can't fall asleep. Why? Well, that blue light stimulates the circadian rhythm. It thinks it's daylight. Just think about people um, that work night shift. Um, they've got quite a lot of problems um, and that is why night shift should be changed, okay, to try and correct that rhythm again. Um, that's where jet lag comes from. So um, the brain has been awake for quite some time um, and, and it thinks it's time to sleep at the place where you are. Uh, um, you know, is, is eight hours um, behind and um, there it's in the afternoon. So, um, and that is why we are so tired. It's because we have messed up that rhythm. And I think during lockdown, it is easy to um, do that to you. So it might be a good idea before we start to go back to our normal daily routine to try and correct it. Um, which would mean that, and my first thing is, technology should be switched off at least an hour before we want to be asleep. So if your normal rhythm is to be asleep by 10, 9 o'clock everything should be switched off. Okay, and That is when you start getting into your routine. Um, I've spoken about the brain that wants to cool down. So um, if you want to be asleep by 10, 9 o'clock I would take a bath, but um, by half past 9 um, I will be out of the bath, okay? Because um, bath makes us relax, but it also makes us warm, okay? Um, in order for the brain to cool down, you shouldn't be dressed too warmly. And um, your room shouldn't be too warm either. So make sure that you take some time to wind down and um, to um, relax, okay, and also to cool down. So make sure that your room is not too hot and you are not dressed too, hot, too warm. Um, the other thing is that exercise. Exercise is quite stimulating and it's very good for us and it's good for our immune system and it will help you sleep, except not an hour before you have to go to bed. So make sure that if you are a late afternoon exerciser, that you would um, do that, um, you know, um, at least two hours before you go to bed. Okay. Alcohol is a problem just before we go to bed. Um, because alcohol in itself um, would enhance things like snoring or sleep apnea. And then you're not going to have a good night's sleep. You might think you're half dead, but you're not going to sleep well. And I think it's now also important to talk about there are different stages of sleep. And we all know about the REM and the non-REM. And the REM sleep 
is where we have our um, rapid eye movement that is also where dreaming takes place. Um, I think scientists are not 100% sure what dreaming is all about, but um, we do know that it's a way for the brain to try and handle what has happened during the day. Um, so the REM sleep is usually the like the starting off process that you have, um, the same for the, for the computer. It is the non-REM sleep. So we have three stages. Um, the most important stage is the third stage. That is a really deep sleep. And that really deep sleep, if we do that properly, that's when you wake up invigorated, ready for the day, full of energy. If you don't, then um, it's usually that stage three of the REM, non-REM sleep that is not, um, haven't gone according to plan. And that is where alcohol comes in. It is during that time where you have then sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is when you stop breathing when you sleep or that we snore. So, um, yes, um, if you snore, you might not find that so difficult and, and if your partner does, but um, at the same time, um, it, it isn't good for your deep sleep. Um, the other important thing is our teenagers. Now, what we need to understand about them is that their whole circadian and homeostatic sleep-wake rhythm shifts. So it shifts later. So when normally 10 o'clock would be about the time that we go to bed and we sleep between seven and nine hours. So, um, you know, um, anything, if you go to bed at 10, wake up between five and seven in the morning, there's a definite shift that is scientifically well um, described. There's a shift for them. So now they, their circadian rhythm wants them to go to sleep one or two o'clock in the morning. The only problem is when they're in their normal routine, then um, they still have to get up at six to be at school at eight. Um, for them, it's a good idea to allow them over the weekend to catch up on the sleep. Okay, but now that we're in lockdown, they're not going to school. Leave them. Okay, and leave them that they follow their own rhythm. Um, so if they want to go to bed at two, but they only wake up at 10. Um, I think um, allow that, you know. Just to make sure that the same principle um, goes for them, is that um, no technology, at least an hour before they have to be asleep. It's interesting, um, I listened to a physician that works with, um, mainly with COVID patients um, in America, and what I found extremely interesting is um, the things that he is doing to um, build up his own immune system to um, help him or to protect him um, against um, the risk of, of um, getting the virus. And one of the key things was sleep. Um, he is adamant that he tries to get nine hours at least of proper deep sleep. So I think um, it is important.